I have a pen knife in my desk. We can do this right now. <laughs> I'll flat out castrate you. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Ramis swears he's, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're diving into r slash neckbeard stories, yes indeed, continuing that ancient neckbeard story of lavender and villainy. I don't know why my voice got like that really fast, but <laughs> that's fine, we're just gonna pick up, carry on, do what we do, little Ann Woods making her glorious return. If you missed part one, obviously that link is in the description as per usual. Part one, probably the heaviest part that we're going to be experiencing, at least from what I can remember from what was said at the end of the first post. But I am sure that we are not completely safe, as it is when you get around neckbeards. Things just uh, seem to go haywire all the time. I do have a love-hate relationship with it, but I guess we'll see how sideways things can go. If this beard ends up getting punished in any way, uh, I think there is one more part after this one, so... Brace yourselves, we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some Neckbeard Stories Cringe. A Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy, Chapter 2, The Two Bastards. Ah <laughs> oh boy, he's got a, a teammate, I suppose. TLDR, Lavender asks about my parents' genitalia <laughs> and sex life. Oh no, Ancient Beard exposes himself as the creep that he is, as if he didn't do that last episode. And the bearded bosses do what they do best, nothing at all. Just about par for the course as far as bosses go, I do think. Welcome back, dear reader. Today, I will once again regale you with stories from my workplace and the lavender-scented asshat that inhabited it. Today I will be taking you further into the den of inappropriate insensitivity. Once again, sorry for any spelling mistakes and phrasing errors, English is not my first language. Please don't hesitate to give me pointers. How else am I gonna learn? Seems like you got a pretty good grasp on things. I do change some words up and stuff just to make it uh, easier to say and understand. So those are my pointers. <laughs> and we've got the cast. Me, that's OP. Between 24 and 26, when these stories took place, tiny woman. I'm not the prettiest of women, but I do attract a lot of neckbeards. I'm a very young-looking person, and I can look anywhere from 5 to 10 years younger. <laughs> I thought you were going to say 5 years old. I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, blue eyes, ever-changing hair colors, and a wardrobe that goes anywhere from professional chic to, hey, look, that girl's a giant nerd. Better than my wardrobe, honestly, where people go, God, it looks like he really does not care. <laughs> Doesn't he have a job? No, dude. I'm a YouTuber. I live in my underwear, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Lavender Beard is the main antagonist of these stories. A long, thin, crooked man with graying hair and teeny, tiny eyes. Not able to talk at a normal decibel level. He can be heard from like a kilometer away. Always accompanied by his trusty diabetes pump, <laughs> which he likes to shove into people's faces for no reason. He smells like he fell into a cauldron of lavender as a child, and he leaves a trail of artificial lavender scent everywhere he stomps, even the girl's bathroom. Hey, get that beard out of the girl's bathroom. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to be in there. Ancient beard, the oldest of the neck beards at my job. Likes to tell people about how many celebrities he's managed. When looked up, you can't find anything, so yeah, that's all probably a lie. <laughs> he only works on his side business instead of doing his job. I don't think I ever saw him do any actual work. He always handed his year-long backlog over to the interns. Hey, what are interns for? <laughs> only worked one more year after I arrived, thank goodness, and then he retired. He likes to talk about all the women he begged when he was younger. Yeah, that's probably a lie too. <laughs> Ancient Beard looked about 20 years older than he actually was. He looked a bit like a shriveled prune. He had almost no hair left, but combed what remained 
over his gigantic bald spot. <laughs> Leg bitch, briefly mentioned in the previous story, worked directly under the... In the previous story, I called it an alderman, but I'm not sure if that's the correct translation. According to Wikipedia, it may be roughly translated as alderman or counselor or magistrate. Let's just call her the big boss. Looks like a total Karen. Even has the Karen haircut. I end up being unable to call the manager since she kind of is the manager and is absolutely horrible at her job. Can a Karen also be a leg beard? <laughs> My god, they're multiclassing. <laughs> there was just a permanent smile plastered on her face whenever you spoke to her, but it never reached her eyes. It was the fakest smile I have ever seen. And every time she did this, I just got so angry. <laughs> I don't know why this particular quirk pisses me off so much, but it just looked so condescending. I wanted to punch it right off of her stupid face. <laughs> you should have done it. It probably was condescending, extremely insincere, total care and move to just act nice until the point that they don't get what they want, and then they switch it into bitch mode. It was always very clear through her constant nodding, yeses, and uh-huh, while you were still speaking that she fucking couldn't care less. You knew even before you were done talking that nothing you said would make any difference because she wasn't actually listening. <laughs> oh man, we got a lot of cast today. Stinky beard! <laughs> Leg bitch's direct subordinate and the boss above my supervisor. Sorry if this is getting confusing. <laughs> I'm still hanging in there. It's a big cast list, but it's good to have some background. Stinky Beard was actually a pretty nice dude. Most of the time. He was, however, the stinkiest, homeless-looking rich man that I've ever encountered. <laughs> Stinky Beard was extremely thin, almost 65 years old, and had a smell to him that clung to anything that he touched or if he stood in the vicinity for too long, it would linger. It was like the scent equivalent of the slime that a snail trails behind it. <laughs> you just couldn't get it off or shake it. He smelled like a turd. <laughs> <laughs> that had been baking in a closed hot car in the summer. Sprinkled with dust and mothballs and iron. Whoa! <laughs> That's really painting a picture, OP. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> I had coworkers literally throw pens away after he used them or go get a new desk chair from another room because he sat in theirs for a second and the smell just did not go away. Like Ancient Beard, this man also had a comb over, but where Ancient Beard's hair gave him at least a little bit of an illusion of hair, Stinky Beard's hair totaled like a whopping 20 hairs at the most. <laughs> at this point, just shave it, dude. Throw in the towel. <laughs> it's over. Somehow he managed to make these hairs that look like whiskers on a naked mole rat look so greasy. I think he might have dipped his hair in butter every morning. <laughs> the fact that crusty brown and yellow flakes attached themselves to the little pubes on his head did not help in the least. Oh, God. How can you have dandruff with only 20 hairs? <laughs> Something is severely wrong. And I like how OP's like, yeah, he's a nice guy most of the time, but he's a disgusting troll. <laughs> if he's really that nice, we don't need to come at him so hard, but I guess I'll judge him during the story. This man with an exorbitant salary that lived in a villa and drove BMWs, yes, Plural, BMWs, <laughs> came to work in just gray jeans, and I'm pretty sure that it was always the same pair, with brown and white slash gray smudges all over it, and holes in the bottoms. Shoes that had more holes in them than his brown and black teeth did. Ugh! <laughs> A dress shirt that might have been blue at one point, and it probably looked great when he bought it on his first work day in, like, fucking 1970. <laughs> <laughs> and a diarrhea-colored cardigan. <laughs> his response to being challenged was just screaming at you at the top of his lungs. 
If you had the balls to just scream back, though, he came to respect you. Weird man. I ended up liking him from a safe distance. <laughs> Holy fuck, OP. You like this person? You gave it to him with both barrels. Oh, I'd hate to see what you actually have to say about me. <laughs> OP pulling no punches, man. Holy hell. Let me just once again state that all these beards were the same age. All of them seem to think that the other's behavior was just fine. There seem to be some serious generational communication issues here. What literally all of us saw as sexual harassment, inappropriate behavior, and even blatant racism, they just seem to think was completely normal. <laughs> We 20 to 40 year olds were just they're not used to anything. <laughs> God. Uh, okay, Boomer. <laughs> Part two, the two bastards. All right, getting into the meat of the story. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Reddit. The ones that didn't always matter. Full of cringe and creeps they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much disgust had just happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this neckbeard. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out clearer. Neckbeards cannot survive the light. Those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Reddit, I do understand. I know now. OPs in those stories had lots of chances of not posting their stories, only they did. They kept going because they were holding on to something. That there's some good cringe in this world, Mr. Reddit, and that it's worth fighting for. Oh, Sam! <laughs> you know Sam posts on Reddit. I definitely love the Lord of the Rings injections that we get at the beginning of each story. Absolutely beautiful. Anyways, our story continues where we left off last. I had reported Lavender Beard's behavior to my supervisor, who addressed this to Leg Bitch and Stink Beard. Both of them didn't think what Lavender did warranted any repercussions and just kind of swept it under the rug. From HR, I got the following statement. As long as he didn't touch you, there's nothing we can do. And that was that. Yeah, bro, you could pull your dick out in this office, just don't touch anybody with it. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, you might want to get in front of the ball on this one, HR. Jesus. I know now that that is total and utter bullshit, but I had just started. I hadn't worked very long, and most of my older coworkers, most of my coworkers were between 40 and 60, told me that uh, that was just lavender and not to worry about it. So, I dropped it. Oops, should have talked to a lawyer. <laughs> I did, however, become a lot less friendly towards him. When he came to sit next to me, I just put on my headphones. When that didn't work and he started waving his hand two centimeters from my goddamn face, I told him to go bother someone else and to leave me alone. When he got so loud talking at all the other people that I could hear him over my headphones, I was known to yell at him to shut up and do some work for a change. I very quickly discovered that this was the only way to get him to shut up for at least a half an hour. Yeah, 16 times a day? All right, I can do that. <laughs> of course, if he had just behaved himself after this, I probably wouldn't be writing this epic tale of bearded sorrow. So let me tell you about the time that he heard my biological father was trans. Oh, no. I'm sure he's going to have some fantastic insights there. <laughs> I always wanted to hear a 60-year-old's thoughts on trans people. Oh, boy. My department deals, among other things, with the registration of a new gender. So if someone wants to officially change their gender, they come to us. Now, in my department, it was very quickly known that I had two moms and that one of them was my biological father. They split up around the time that I was 17, but they still got along amazingly well and were still best friends. For this story, I will address her as Lily. So Lily had underwent an entire sex change. This too was known, our laws were pretty horrible at the time, and you could only change your gender officially 
if you were infertile so that they couldn't reproduce. Yikes. Well, tough tits. <laughs> I'm still here. And now you can change your gender without this ridiculous requirement. We fought hard for that one, so booyah! <laughs> Honestly, pretty ridiculous that it had to be a fight at all. Like, who gives a shit what people want to consider themselves, you know? If it makes you happy, you do you, boo-boo. No skin off my nose. So, one day, one of the co-workers from the Department of Marriage came to me concerning the laws stated above and how this would affect their certificates. They knew that I knew a lot about this subject, so it was a perfectly fine thing to ask. Lavender, however, had been eavesdropping from his desk in the corner and practically sprinted over to us to start asking questions. Lavender, hey, your dad had a sex change? OP, yes, she's a woman now. Lavender, so, so does he have a vagina now? <laughs> OP, she had an operation. Yes, Lavender, how does that work? Like, how do you turn your wiener into a hoo-ha? <laughs> uh, why? Are you interested? <laughs> I have a pen knife in my desk. We can do this right now. <laughs> See, now this is a question that I don't really have a problem with because it just asks about the surgical aspect of it. It is pretty interesting, I think. So I explained in general how the process works, both male to female and female to male. The next questions, however, were not so scientifically oriented. Lavender, what does your dad's vagina look like? <laughs> oh, God! Uh, he was practically salivating. Coworker, Lavender, what the hell? What kind of question is that? OP, first of all, Ew! And second of all, how the hell am I supposed to know that? Lavender shrugs. Are ah, your parents still together? OP. Not anymore. No, they split up a few years back. They're still good friends, though. Lavender. But were they together when your dad had his surgery? OP is now getting seriously annoyed with his insistence on using a male pronoun. Yeah, they were. And it's she and her. Lavender completely ignoring me. So what was sex like? <laughs> I wasn't in the room, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Does your dad have female orgasms? How often did they have sex? Do you have pictures? <laughs> God, you killed me. Uh, what? <laughs> Why would I have pictures? <laughs> I don't even have the words, man. My coworker and I were also just lost for words. I just gaped, mouth open at him for like a straight minute. Just stunned silence, while Lavender just prattled on. Who asks that? How? Why? No! <laughs> just no! <laughs> My coworker told him he was disgusting, and I just picked up my stuff and went to work in the office next door. I didn't speak to him at all for like a week straight. Not that that stopped him from talking to me, but at least he never asked about my mom's genitals again. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was no point in reporting this, but I did it anyways, and I got the same response from Leg Bitch as I did the time before. Ugh, that is a handful, dude. What is the thought process? I'm, I'm so lost. <laughs> what the hell? Around this time, I also got my first experience with Ancient Beard. I'd come to know him as a narcissistic old man that could really only talk about himself, did nothing at all, and somehow still got paid for it. I instantly did not like this man. He was rude to the civilians in the front office and made so many mistakes. He did, however, at least mostly keep to himself, only talking to David, see the last story, and Lavender. Them old geezers gotta stick together, I guess. <laughs> Birds of a feather, as I always say. One day, Ancient Beard 
a female coworker of mine and I all had front office duty together. It was nearing the end of our shift, and there were no other people around. My coworker, let's just call her Lady, and I were talking about an actor or something like that. We were making a few jokes about him. Some were a bit racy, <laughs> but nothing really inappropriate. Suddenly, Ancient Beard pipes up from his desk. Ancient Beard, yeah, well, OP, you get me really horny. <laughs> <laughs> the lady and I just turned around in shock. Did I really just hear that right? What? I asked. The venom was just dripping off of my face at this moment. Ancient Beard, Hey, it's not my fault. You shouldn't dress like that if you don't want that kind of reaction. <laughs> Now, for the record, not that it matters, but this is what I was wearing. This was what was so incredibly provocative that it should elicit such a response. Shorts that came to just above the knees, with leggings under that, and a long sleeve blouse. Also, combat boots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm such a tease. <laughs> I think he's into combat boots. At this point, I went off on him. I told him he was disgusting, that his response was inappropriate, and to apologize. I said a lot more, but I don't remember the complete phrasing. Ancient Beard responded with, I'm sorry you can't take a compliment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I told him that if that was his idea of a compliment, to just stick to silence instead. Then I once again went to Leg Bitch and Stinkbeard. They responded as you might have suspected by now. While both of them agreed that that was inappropriate, they just had this to say. He's from another generation. Just hold on a little longer. He's almost retired. It's just how he is. <laughs> the senility is creeping in. You gotta let him do whatever he wants. This was officially the last time that I reported anything to them, but it was far from the last encounter. I hope that you like this chapter. More will be coming. Once again, I'm not apologizing for the beefiness that is this post. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I will see you in the next chapter. The episode continues. Well, at the very least, it seems like you're getting more comfortable at the job and not hesitating to push back against these beardos. It really sucks that you had to take all this stuff to HR, and on top of that, HR just ended up doing nothing about it. I don't know how well the job pays, or if you enjoyed it or anything like that. I guess on some level, you might have enjoyed the work to stick around and put up with all this bullshit surrounding you, but... Oh man, the Spanish Inquisition popping up to ask all about your mom's genitals? Like, <laughs> what the hell is that? That's probably the part that blew my mind the most, but... Ancient Beard also calling out OP and saying that she makes him horny or something like that. Like, was this ever an appropriate thing to do? I guess you could have gotten away with it back in the 60s and 70s. Although my only frame of reference for that is a few episodes of Mad Men, so... <laughs> I don't actually know how it was. I wasn't even bored at that point. But maybe some other folk in the comments can enlighten me. It doesn't seem like something that ever would have been appropriate, but... I don't know, times change, and definitely change for the better as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> OP should be able to wear combat boots and a long sleeve blouse to work without being uh, verbally assaulted. <laughs> Ugh, absolutely ridiculous. I really do enjoy these posts. I'll be looking forward to parts 2.5 and 3 uh, sometime in the coming weeks, but I also want to thank Little Ann Woods for just being a lovely person, hanging out in the Discord, supporting on the Patreon. It really does feel great to have someone enjoying the channel that much. I hope that you guys are enjoying it as well. You can let me know by liking, commenting, and or subscribing. Maybe sharing the video around if you should like. 
We've also got a bunch of links in the description. I hope you'll click around down there. All kinds of plugs and playlists and social medias. Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Come on through. Say hey. We've also got my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. And I'd like to thank them as I do every episode. So thank you very much. Calvicus, Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Aaron W., Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Libison, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Silent Revolver, Zero MMX, Magdala Marshall, Thornrose, Cherish Kitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Dower, Satori, Babsy Coon, Caustic Fox, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, OG James Cook, a pimp named Jay Crisp, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, Miss Monday, Lord Liono, Jackets Rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, Mr. J, my boy Natwin Nick, Lady Nix, Origami Steve, Katie Kins Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ash, Siegfried, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, Teddy the Police, Ten Ton Monster, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, Treeberg, Will Max, Redwind, Goose as Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, Saints Blessing, John Indoors, A Normal Joe, Amara, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry! <laughs> California Keto Girl, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, KJW Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Little Ann Woods, AROP for this story. Thank you so much. Times two, Mark 211, maybe next time. Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, or Game of Cam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, Raptor Art, Ellie, The Last Shinobi, and the Necro Baracon. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting the channel in the way that you do, making me love my work so very much. I do hope some other people will join up on the Patreon, but if you can't do it right now, friends, don't sweat it too hard. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos. Maybe. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.